Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, Two households, both alike in dignity. In fair Verona, where we lay our scene. The first time I read Romeo and Juliet, I was like, this is weak. I don't get it. This ain't got nothing to do with my life. Now, when I read it, it's like, this is what's going on in my neighborhood right now. Richmond, California. Welcome to my city. Last weekend, we had a shooting every night. And one night, we had two shootings. So we have a gang problem. It's about North versus Central. The reason why we are fighting is because our parents was fighting. My little brother, it was really easy for him to be a thug. It's in his bloodline. When I was a little kid, I always envisioned myself being somebody important. I want to be one of the biggest drug dealers in Richmond. Nah. Bay what about Dante's story touched your soul? Dante's story is, is like so many stories. Artists who survived through, I mean, I survived through art. I sold drugs. I found art as a way to get out of my head, which took me out of the ghetto. You get out of your head first, and art helps people survive spiritually and grows them. And when you look inside, as Dante does to write his poetry, you find strong, powerful, um, a, a different relationship with the world, a more informed relationship. Dante was at that interesting like crossroads where he had just discovered spoken word. I didn't know if he'd be interested in teaching. It was either that or the street, so I, I changed my profession. We finna take Romeo and Juliet, rewrite it, and make it fit Richmond. Romeo is from North Richmond, Juliet is from Central. That's what make it like, ooh. And they were black, ooh. So Jason had been hearing about him for years, but when he heard the premise that Dante had decided to rewrite Romeo and Juliet to fit the story of what's happening in Richmond, California, um, he was like, this is too good, I have to capture it. And he thought he was just coming to get a little bit of footage, but he fell so in love with the characters and the cast that um, he uprooted his whole life and moved to Richmond for a year, and it turned into a full-length documentary. And during that time, a lot happened. Chevron, the Chevron refinery exploded. One of our students got murdered during the process of making the film. So he could have never known what was going to happen. And so the film, the story evolved um, and changed throughout the entire process. And I just feel really blessed about the timing of it, that he was there to capture it. Because I think Dante and these young people are like the most inspiring people I know. And I just want the world to see them. I am actually just moved back to Ann Arbor, Michigan. And I'm working at the Neutral Zone Teens Center, running the literary arts program there that Dante and I based Raw Talent off of in part. Um, so my life has come full circle, but the Raw Talent program is actually now the RISE Performing Arts Program, so it has continued on at a new organization called the RISE Center in Richmond. And um, Naya and Sierra, two of the young women over here, have like stepped up and taken on a lot of that work with DeAndre as Dante and I parted ways and have moved on to different things in our lives. Uh, it's been a a beautiful journey. Um, I learned a lot about myself. Uh, I learned a lot about what it means to be a leader, what it means to be self-sufficient, what it means to express yourself, um, and how to be brave in, in times of challenge. Like, I lost a lot of people. I lost a lot of uh, insecurity as well along the way. So I feel like it's been a beautiful experience. What was it about the director that made you feel confident that he was going to do you right? Honestly, I had to get to know him personally. I feel like if I treat you like family, then you that's what you're going to capture. You're going to capture uh, the beauty of my relationship. Really, it's like I didn't look at it as a documentary. I looked at him as like, this is my cousin. Like, you you folks of my folks, so you family. So while we having our moment, all you're doing is just capturing family moments. So that's how I looked at it. So I didn't really look at it as like a project. You know and I mean, so that made it a little bit easier for me to allow this person to come in and tell a story. Yeah. Uh, I learned that no matter how much I try to run for my purpose, I'm always going to find it. It's always going to find me. I wasn't really used to acting or really used to being, I wasn't used to being in front of a camera at all. It was, it was scary. When I first got on camera, I was afraid to open up. I was afraid to show them my life. I was afraid to let people see me in a, in a vulnerable stage. 
But like, I'm really glad they pushed me. I'm really glad they gave me a platform to use my voice, you know, and to allow me to see who I was at 17, 18, 16, however old I was. And it's just, it's just a truly beautiful thing, you know. I didn't realize it then, but watching it now, the age I am now, it just shows me how much I've grown and shows me how much I've loved myself now. And it's, it's, truly, it's truly a beautiful thing to see yourself at a young age and to think that you got it all together, think you got it all figured out, and to be in the future. And to be like, wow, like you really changed. You really allowed yourself to be better, more than what you thought you could be. And yeah, it's a, it's a beautiful experience. Hi, my name is Molly Pershing Rayner, and I've just been buzzed. <laughs> I'm about to do a concert. It's one of our outfits, the band, what do you like? We've been doing it. It's a blast.